Okay. You know, you're sitting out there in the public hearing portion now. He's got to go to council meetings now. Oh, you have to go to council meetings now? Oh, yeah. Fine for you. <laughs> so, so, so yes, he has been. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we actually talked about this. You know, I'm doing the best in my devotion. No, Aaron's, Aaron's getting to break in the legislative back. Very cool. To, uh, <laughs> so let's think of some really hard questions to ask him. Oh, uh, okay. Put him on the spot. This is the word. <laughs> <laughs> we get a phone a friend. They only have a question, but Gareth, you can answer. <laughs> okay, well, it's uh, time to go. Yeah, it's time. We're good. All right. Call to order March 8th, 2023, Midvale Planning and Zoning Meeting. Get a roll call. Pledge of allegiance. Oh, yeah, sorry. We start every meeting with pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. How about a roll call now? Yep. Chair Snow? Here. Vice Chair Anderson? Here. Commissioner Tippett? Here. Commissioner Lecky? Here. Commissioner Erickson? Here. Commissioner Benson? Here. Commissioner Kasparian? Here. Minutes. Did everybody get the minutes? Yes, they were actually in the first... Well, we, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, well, before we postponed the meeting, that's where the minutes were. I thought were. that was N.A. No, nope, not. Anyone have any problems? No. 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 We're approving the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes. I'll second it. We'll Chairs, no, you just do it. Oh, Yay. I move we you approve the minutes. It's an I vote. Yay. 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 Motion Chairs passes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah, mommy. laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. First item on the public. Uh, I'm going to butcher this last name. Go for it. Deer? Deer. Deer. J. Deer requests an amendment to Midville uh, Municipal Code 17-7-1.4 regarding development standards in the F, or excuse me, SF-1 zone. Tongue twister. And planning's going to... Chairman and Commissioners, I'm bringing this core text amendment that Mr. Deer um, gave us, and it's relatively simple. He is um, requesting that the city change setbacks in the SF1 zone. Um, and it's a, it's a specific way how the request has come. Um, if you look at the language here on the screen, um, he basically is asking for increasing the allowed distance of intrusion into the setback. So currently, let's say you have a landing on the outside of your home, um, let's say a staircase that goes to the second story or so, then that landing can protrude into the side setback, as an example, by three and a half feet. Um, the proposal here is to change that to up to six and a half feet. And the practical result of that is that the the setback to the property line, to the neighboring home, can shrink to really one and a half feet, you know, which isn't very much. I mean, it's about the distance from the tip of my finger to my elbow. Um, so in this particular zone, we're really not used to that. Um, 
The other change here is that not only stairs and landings can protrude into the setback, but also balconies and porches. And that um, carries through um, in the proposed change. Um, if we go to the second page here, it's basically the same proposal for the rear setback. Um, with the rear setback, it, this is not quite as much of a departure, one could say, because the rear setback in and of itself is already um, a greater distance. It's 15 feet. Um, the main, I think, concern is probably with the side setback. The considerations you would probably want to think about are the following. Um, that the new types of intrusion into the setback, they are of a different quality than what our zone currently has. Actually, I will just go back again here. So currently, it's really just stairs and landings. And the reason our code allows that, which the language even says, is because they may be required by the building code. Um, balconies and porches, however, um, aren't necessarily required by the building code. They, they are a different type of um, arrangement. Um, a balcony is an area you may be sitting on, you know, you might have a chair, a table, um, it's, it's of a different quality than a staircase with a, um, with a landing. The same with a porch. So right now the code is they can extend three feet into the side yard. And we have a seven foot setback on the site? Um, the site setback is eight. Eight, okay. And so the, the petition is to let this... Oh. Yeah. intrusion happen okay. that's up to six and a half feet. And what the other difference in, in quality really is that these are in a way habitable spaces. People sit on their porch or sit on their balcony. And this could be you know, on the ground, but it could also be on the second story of the home. And um, so this, this is the background. And with these considerations in mind, as staff, um, we've, we recommend to deny this um, application. Do you have any questions for me? Questions for planning? Not right now, no. Mm -hmm. Maybe later. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Applicant. Applicant here. I'm gonna come up, state your name for us. Jared Bramwell. I've been asked to assist and help with Jay and and Cherie. They're the the applicants that um, I'm representing. So I appreciate all of your time tonight. And um, a, a couple, all my discussions for the most part have been with Mr. Wilcox, and he's been helpful, and I've appreciated his insight. Um, in trying to work through some of the issues here, and we have came with the text amendment. And I guess I'm not super familiar with how uh, Midvale City Planning Commission works and, and to what extent there's some collaboration, but I did want, and I tried to convey this in the letter that I presented, um, where I, to the extent that there can be a collaborative approach in, in uh, finding a resolution that you guys feel comfortable with that maybe deviates a little bit from with what we formally proposed my clients are, are open to that and would and amenable to that and would would hope that that might be an option um, I guess with respect to um, and, and some of this was cited in the paperwork that that was um, uh, I guess compiled by Midvale City in making the recommendations. They cited to uh, Civil Code 17-1-1. And, and 
I feel like this is relevant for purposes of this discussion and how I've tried to approach it on behalf of my clients. It, it says this title is intended to promote, coordinate development, redevelopment, effective use of land and site planning. And, and that's really what my clients are hoping to achieve by this is that we'll, it will allow, um, I guess, a little more flexible um, use of people's property in Midvale City. It will expand what they can do um, without impinging on or influencing or causing what I believe are potentially any negative, um, I guess, outcomes with respect to what's being proposed and we're asking the Planning Commission to approve over the, the negative recommendation. And as I looked at 17-1-1, it talks about um, it's intended to help protect private property rights. And, and so we're asking um, for the city to expand maybe the uses that property owners can make use of their property a little bit. Um, and I think it accomplishes that, this, this proposed text amendment. Um, e is another one. It says encourage innovation in residential development and redevelopment that meets the growing demand for housing. I, there, the demand for housing is increasing significantly in the state of Utah, and so allowing greater flexibility, I believe, um, would accomplish that objective. F says preserve the character and stability of neighborhoods and conser conserve property values by encouraging the most appropriate uses of land within zoning districts. And I think this, again, provides some greater flexibility that allows landowners to um, use their property and, and make it conducive and um, beneficial. Um, I, foster convenient, compatible, and efficient relationships among the land users. I think that accomplishes, or this text amendment potentially accomplishes that objective. There's M, it says promote prosperity, improve morale, peace, and good order, comfort, convenience, and aesthetics of the city and its present and future inhabitants and businesses. I think that's an objective that's potentially accomplished by this proposal. And then N says protect the tax base and property values. And I think by um, facilitating a greater and better use of, of people's property that that's accomplished as well. I did, the, the ones I haven't noted here, I, as I read through them, and again, this is my assessment or my opinion, um, I don't believe that what we're proposing really does infringe on any of the other intended um, purposes of, of the legislative intent with respect to 17-1-1. With respect to 17-3-1, where it talks specifically about amendments to the zoning code or map, um, and, and the, the paperwork that I reviewed, it did reference this code, sec, um, subsection E. And, and I think um, where, where this proposal fits is E sub 3, where it says um, the criteria required findings that, that would need to be found for purposes of adopting and accepting this is, is um, three says land or its surrounding envir environs has changed or is changing to such a degree that it is in the public interest to encourage redevelopment of the area or to recognize the change character of the area. And so I think with kind of referring back to the changes that have taken place just as Midvale City grows and um, there's more and more development that's taking place and allowing um, kind of to encourage redevelopment and to revitalize the area by adopting this, it, it accomplishes that and I think that would be a means for, um, I guess, granting this. Now, kind of referring back to what I let out with in terms of a collaborative approach, and I cited this in my letter, I think in the SF2 zone, the, the uh, envelope setback requirement is five feet, but they allow the landings um, to protrude out three feet. So we're, we're talking about a two, a two foot buffer that exists in the S SF2 zone. Um, and to maintain consistency, um, we would be open to and would, if, if it was more compatible to the commission, we'd be open to saying, hey, let's make those consistent where instead of six and a half feet, maybe it projects six feet instead. And so it would kind of keep the setbacks more uniform and, and maybe preserve that. And, and, 
and, and I, I also point to that as sort of a basis upon which, hey, it seems like at some point in, in the evaluation when zones were, were, were put into place that they found, hey, two feet is sufficient, um, at least with respect to the SF2 zone. We're not asking that the, the building, the, the main structures themselves be, um, that the, the, the setback requirement from, from eight feet be changed at all. Um, and, and then I would note, and it was me sort of as I read through the code, I, and this was in an interest of trying to be, I guess I would say helpful. Um, as I read through the definitions, we, we have proposed balconies and porches, and that was just to, my hope and goal was to bring some clarity or consistency. Um, if there are concerns with adding balconies or porches for things that I'm not aware of, um, we recognize and, and those were just structures that I feel like, okay, potentially are similar to stairs and, and landings, if you will. So um, for the most part, I, I don't want to um, belabor any of the points that I've made in my letter or some of the points that have been made here today. I don't believe making these changes. As I look at the staff recommendation says, um, it, it indicated that um, they recommended against the change because um, out of character with Midvale's largest lot, single family zone, and introduces privacy concerns. And I guess I would point to the fact that similar to the SF2 zone, and my understanding is that the Planning Commission and City Council has recently adopted um, maybe expanding what, what's able to be done with carports in certain circumstances, broadening that, and, and maybe there's some interest in, and, and I think in those situations, it's able to go right up to the property line. There's not even a buffer zone. And so I, I, I think some of the concerns that have been mentioned for rec the negative recommendation, recommendation are, not, um, are not significant major concerns, and, and there's, bases that we could look at or that you could look at to find to say, hey, um, the privacy concerns are, are not um, a problem and really what this would do is it would allow landowners to utilize their property um, in a more advantageous way, a way that um, benefits them and w without really impinging on any of the, the significant and important criteria that um, Midvale City recognizes with respect to the zoning. Um, that, that's in place for the SF1 zone. So I don't have anything further. If you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions and try and address any questions you have. Anybody have any questions for him? Not right now. Not right now. Okay. <coughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Open the public hearing. We open the public hearing. Okay. I move that we open the public hearing portion. Chair Snow can just open it. Oh, okay. Here we go. Public hearing's open. It's uh, open. Have we received any comments on this at all? I don't, are we doing online comments? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we've received any any comments from public outside of this meeting. Um, no. Okay. I have not received a comment. Okay. Okay. May I ask how was it noticed? Was it noticed? I don't know how we notice these things. So um. Hearings are noticed um, on the city's website, okay. on the Utah Public Notice website, and um, they are also, um, you know, as part of the agenda, the agenda in and of itself is also noticed. Okay. And in, in this case, this, this is a code text amendment. There's not a, you know, geographic location right. per se, but we do send out um, letters to um, what are called affected entities. They're basically other government agencies um, that you know one never knows who may feel they are affected by something. So that's, that's sort of the standard pr procedure to send uh, notice to those entities. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, you're welcome. <coughs> Well, seeing no public comment, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. Moved and seconded. Can we get a roll call? Chair Snow? Yes. Vice Chair Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Tippett? Yes. 
Commissioner Lutke? Yes. Commissioner Erickson? Yes. The motion passes. Comments? Um, let's see, legal. You want to hear from legal? Yeah. My, co my concern with, I, I'm always concerned when we change zoning. Um, my concern with this is that um, the, there's not a lot of redevelopment in this area and in um, these neighborhoods. And so to, ch to change this, um, now all of a sudden uh, you change it for everybody that lives in an SF1 zone. And the reason I moved into an SF1 zone is because I don't want that I don't want a zero a lot line with my neighbor. I don't want, you know, those kind of things. I want a little bit more space. And so um, that that's just my concern is uh, you, once you make this change, you have no, you have now lost control of what everybody can do. And now people will take it, you know, people will take advantage of it. And some people will do a very, wonderful job at what they do. Others, it'll be very um, problematic. And so um, I just, um, I, I, I'm reluctant to make any changes to the, to the zoning for this area because that's why, why you buy in this area. And if you want a closer, type of environment, then you need to look at those areas that have that ability. You know, you get a town home, you get a condo, you get uh, daybreak and stuff. And so. I agree. I think um, we're at, this is an, S, an SF1 zone, S single family homes. I would be very offended if my neighbor all of a sudden put something right, you know, a foot and a half from the property line. I'm kidding. And I'm sure my neighbor would be offended if I did the same thing. It's a matter of privacy, and and so I I have an issue with it. Especially if it's a two-story deck. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that can look old, yeah. I I have an issue. It's a privacy issue for me. And you know, as far as like parking and and stuff. That's a little different because people's parking, a lot of times their driveways are right on the, next to the property line, but that's someone parking and leaving, not uh, partying, visiting, uh, you know, celebrating right next to your property. And so um, I don't see those two as coordinating or similar. I think we always end up, we open a can of worms, and then we've been bit a couple of times yeah. with those kind of things. You know, you think about, we had that corner law incident that was not good. Yeah. And here we are again with something that I just... Should we hear from Wiggle? Yes. Let's do. Can we hear from you? Any comments? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a, um, um, this is a legislative decision. So you'll you'll forward either a positive or a negative recommendation onto the city council. So whatever we do here, we're not going to make it. We're just doing a recommendation, and the city council is the one that will ultimately mm -hmm. make, the decision. make the decision. But we can certainly give them our regards. Anybody want to make a motion? Yeah, anyone want to make a motion? I did want to make a comment before we move oh, on because I, I did write down notes. Um, so. SF1 is very, very different from SF2. That's why we have two designations. And so to, to make them equal doesn't seem respectful of why they're different. Um, a lot of the comments that Candy was saying about if my neighbor did this or I did this, it wouldn't necessarily be very respectful and neighborly being in an SF1 zone. Um, Midvale's already under scrutiny for our land development and how um, uh, compact it's becoming, and I feel like this could become land development of use to some point if it's written into the code. 
where it could be abused rather than respected by neighbors being neighbors, it could be abused by developers just packing people into an SF1 zone when it should really be a different zone type. And that could already exacerbate an issue that we're dealing with um, as a growing city, a very desirable city. And then private property rights do include privacy. And I feel like this could definitely encroach on that in an SF1 zone. Um, there's an expectation in single family that you do have some privacy in Midville. That's one of the benefits of our larger lots here is that we do have a bit more privacy than farther into the city. And so I wanted to make those comments because Midville's unique in where we're at and um, it, could, it would change how my neighborhood looks and I don't think it's necessarily for the best. I agree. Ditto. So I want to make a motion. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make a motion. Um, I move that we recommend denial of the request to the amendment of Midvale Mid Municipal Code Section 17-7-1.4 regarding development standards in the SF1 zone with the findings noted in the staff report. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Can we get a roll call? Chair Snow? Yes. <clears throat> Vice Chair Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Tippett? Yes. Commissioner Lutke? Yes. Commissioner Erickson? Yes. The motion passes. We'll leave it up to city council. Thanks, guys. Thank you. There is no next. Oh, yeah, there is. There is. My favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> Election of chair and vice chair. You can't run two consecutive things. That's a new rule. I, I would like to make a recommendation. You better not be me here. I'm <laughs> I would like to nominate Shane Lidkeet as chairman. Are we writing this down? Who keeps track of this? Can I make a recommendation? How many recommendations you can, can you make? You can make as many, because then we vote. Oh, okay. we vote. My recommendation is for Candace Erickson. Wait, do we all make a recommendation? <laughs> <laughs> There's only so many of us. <laughs> <laughs> for chair. Let's just vote. For chair. For chair. Anything else? Adam? I'll just add one thing. Um, in past planning commissions that I've worked with, um, whether or not, if someone is nominated, if you will, um, the person that's nominated would usually say, I accept the nomination or I don't, because it's not okay. fair if someone doesn't necessarily want it. And so for both of those that were nominated, <laughs> if, if both of them accept it, then you can go ahead and vote. But yeah, yeah. That, that's just one thing to keep in consideration. I accept the nomination. I know. I nominate Candace Erickson for chair. If Commissioner Lucky accepts, I would um, divert to that acceptance. Well, I think we have to vote, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. We have to vote. So, oh, vote. so um, at this point, someone should probably make a motion and we'll look for a second oh, for... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I forgot that part. I was just thinking <laughs> they have to accept, otherwise it's make a motion you and can't second force and then someone into that vote. position. Yep, I, I, I guess whoever made the nomination can move or whatever, and then we'll look for a second, um, and then we'll have a vote on that nomination. I I would like to make a motion to vote on um, Shane Lidke accepting the nomination as chair for twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four, partially. Second that. How do I do roll call? Sorry, I'm new to this. Yeah, yeah we have not know this part. Roll call? Or do we all have to say yes? Our vote. I, we'll, we'll do a roll call. Yep. Sorry, I apologize. And, and, and I should believe, have practiced. <coughs> who knew? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe even the alternates can vote on the chair yes. and vice chair. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. So. Voice gets to be heard. <laughs> <laughs> you get to speak tonight. Yeah. <laughs> And that's, we're going to do a roll call. They're finally on the hot seat. Yeah. <laughs> With everybody. Okay. Uh, Chair Snow? Yes. Vice Chair Anderson? Yes. 
Commissioner Tippett? Yes. Commissioner Lecky? Yes. Commissioner Erickson? Yes. Commissioner Benson? Yes. Commissioner Kasparian? Yes. The motion passes. Congratulations. Okay, now we need to make nominee for I vice chair. Know. Do you nominate yes. Candace? Can I nominate? Am I allowed to do that? Yes, yes you are. I'll accept vice training wheels. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can we go? <laughs> Wait, somebody's got to make a motion. I'll make a motion. <laughs> See, I'm getting good at this now. No. <laughs> I'll make a motion that uh, Candace uh, Eric, Erickson. Erickson be appointed a co-chair of the Midfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Second. Moved and seconded. Can we get a roll call? Chair Snow? Yes. Vice Chair Anderson? Yes. Commissioner Tippetts? Yes. Commissioner Lecky? Yes. Commissioner Erickson? Yes. Commissioner Benson? Yes. Commissioner Kasparian? Yes. Just Motion passes. Okay. So, j just to make a clarification on that motion, I think it was um, verbalized as co chair. I think the vice chair. Vice vice chair. chair. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Just, just to be clear. That was um, also, to clarify, were they being elected or were they just accepting the the nomination? So they accept the nomination and then the commission votes to have them as the um, new people. Thank you. And the appointments next are time. until the next, <laughs> until the following March. So. Awesome. <laughs> because you're free. So are we on to the next? All right. Next up, staff updates and other business. I will do that and I will go over there. Okay. Oh, awesome. oh he's Very official. official. Oh. That means the next meeting's going to be fun. He's got, yeah. <laughs> he's, oh, great. Am I out the next meeting? <laughs> you are. That? Yeah. I'm not there in the next meeting? Like they're in it. Immediately. It's a little easier yeah. from here because I can see all of you without having to turn left, right, left. <laughs> um, and I wanted to show you something just as a reminder. Um, we've, we've talked about um, ways how we can all, you know, get to know more about planning. And there are some educational events coming up. I don't know how many of you check the Utah APA website at times. Um, if you don't, we can send you the link. Would you please go sign? Yeah. Yes, it's not daily for me. Okay, <laughs> yeah. all right. Yeah, it's uh, also not what? daily for me. <laughs> We'll, we'll hopefully get there at some okay. point. So, <laughs> anyway, there is a an events tab, and this an events tab has educational offerings. Some are for free. Some we have to pay for. This first one here is for free. Um, you can look at it. A lot of that has already happened, and it's geared more towards uh, resort communities but it doesn't necessarily mean that there wouldn't be some value in that if you are interested in that. Um, then we have a symposium coming up. This, and this is a virtual event, and APA does these quite often. Um, they're basically webcasts um, about all sorts of topics. Then this one here may be something um, that could be of interest to you. Um, the, let's see if this is going to load. We had a workshop just like this at Science Bank in January, um, but there are more workshops. Um, and these are about how cities can use their assets uh, to their advantage. Um, for example, if a city has um, vacant land, uh, buildings, but mostly vacant land, and the, the workshops were really about how to take that asset and turn it into something that's um, tax producing in order for the city to be able to do other things with that revenue stream. 
Um, so they were quite interesting. They're maybe not in the mainstream of what you are dealing with, but quite interesting. Um, the um, next one that I wanted to especially point out to you is the Utah APA Spring Conference. Um, it takes place in Vernal this time. If any of you are interested in going, let us know early so that, so that we can make sure we count every penny that's left in the budget to ensure that there's enough for everyone who can go. Um, um, otherwise, there are, so I mentioned this um, APA webcast series. There's a separate website. This is the one and I can, we can send you the link. Um, there are quite a few offerings um, throughout the year about all sorts of topics. Um, and, you know, this, this keeps on going. So if you would like, or if, if you choose to participate in one of those, they're usually for free. Um, just keep track of it so that we can put it down as part of your continuing education. Wendelin, that, that conference at San Bernal, yeah. is that similar to the conference that was down at Thanksgiving Point? Because that was really helpful and was very interesting. Yes. So I would recommend if anyone can mm -hmm. go, that I would recommend going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, it's... They'll do, the APA Utah will do two a year. They, they'll usually do one along the Wasatch Front mm -hmm. in the fall, okay. and then in the spring they'll do one kind of else. someplace else to, you know, yeah, for other very, areas. It was a very interesting conference. I learned a lot. It was and cool. all of those conferences typically have a track just for planning commissioners. Now, you don't have to stick to that track, but typically those um, courses are offered towards what planning commissioners deal with and how to deal with the issues that come before you as well. So, um, But, of course, it doesn't mean Many of the other courses would be just as applicable, applicable, and um, you, you never know if if any of these courses really require any previous knowledge or not. So I mean, it's any of them. If you look into the program, that might sound interesting to you, are probably good to attend. So. Um, then I had um, a couple of other things that I wanted to um, let you know about. So uh, the discussion on bylaws, we'll do that at the next meeting. Um, this packet also had the portion in the municipal code in it. And so when you review the bylaws and the portions in the municipal code, just ask yourself, is there anything you would like changed? Um, the bylaws, you know, cover a lot of, you know, really a whole realm of what you as planning commissioners are involved in. Even easy things like when do we have regular sessions, when do we have workshops. Um, and, you know, we are trying to make it easy for you. So if you have any preferences, let's say, you you as a commission say you would like to always meet no matter how short or long the meeting is, we can accommodate that. Or, I mean, we have lately, we've, if we, when we can, we've tried to, you know, have items on one agenda so that if we have, well, a week where we don't have a meeting, then we thought that maybe something you appreciate. But think about that. I mean, this is, would be something we can discuss um, with the bylaws. And other things you could, you know, take a note of what the term limits are and the bylaws and so on and so on. There are lots, lots of different things that we can dig into. And at the next meeting, we should have plenty of time to to discuss that. Um, then I wanted to give you a quick update on what other things um, we are doing. Um, we are still working on the Bingham Junction station area plan that's um, been making some progress. 
Um, the Fort Union and Center Street station area plan is making a lot of progress. Um, so we are really happy about that. And then the study um, for the streetscape of Main Street is um, also making a lot of progress. And if you've been on the city's homepage, you may have seen something um, when it scrolls through, and that is this. And, and Aubrey can tell you a little more about that and how it relates to Main Street. Um, hello, commissioners. <laughs> so this is something, uh, a community engagement event that the RDA is putting on. Mainly, um, the reasoning behind it is to get input on like critical design elements on Main Street and kind of how you know everybody's feeling about it. We want to hear from everybody in the community and also provide a fun way to get involved. So. Um, you know, it's back to the, the future of Midville, Maine. We want to bring back um, some really cool features and want to see how you guys feel about that. And then we'll be playing the movie after. There'll be some free popcorn and things like that to socialize a little bit. I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Pearl um, since it switched over to that. It's pretty cool in there. Um, and then there's a RSVP on the Engage Midvale website. And then if you guys have social media, just helping spread the word on Facebook and Instagram, be awesome. We're just trying to get a really good turnout so that we feel like we have, you know, the voice of the people around and that everybody feels happy about what's going on and aware, so, yeah. Yeah, and the, when you click on this, on the city's main page, um, it will take you to the Engage Midvale website and that's where the um, RSVP is actually right here. And I was told if you RSVP, then you are guaranteed a seat, right? Yeah, so just, uh, you know, the capacity in the Pearl isn't giant. So um, if you want to make sure you can go just RSVP and it kind of gives us a little bit of an estimate of what to expect. Um, and then also, if you don't want to stay for the movie, if you just consider coming to do the poll that's going to happen at 6.30 um, for your input about Main Street and the design elements, that'd be awesome. And the movie's just an extra afterwards, so. So that's everything that I had for the sta staff update. I hope you enjoyed Planning Commission dinner and there'll be another one coming later on this year. So. Thank you so much for that dinner. Oh. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I tried to get my, my boyfriend to come tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard to match the dinner, I guess. Yeah. No. I told him about the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't sell him. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to say? Anyone want to adjourn us? I'd like to say congratulations to Candace and Shane. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I move that we adjourn at uh, 644. Bum, bum. Second. <laughs> Third. Done <more. laughs> Good job. There's snow. I'm out. Yeah. Good job, Robin. By the way, I don't remember here when asked if I would accept Yeah, it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so was Nolan Boyd all year. That was new. I'm sorry, but you were asked. I was not asked.